The Sports Source is brought to you by Fast Frame. Turn your memorabilia into a work of art. You are watching East Tennessee's first and only year-round sports talk show on television. This is The Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. Happy to have you with us. It is our annual All VFL show today. Eight former, I'm sorry, eight VFLs, eight Vols for Life. Anytime I say former, I get the emails. Eight VFLs, uh, all on one show as we talk Tennessee football. We talk about the Dave Hart decision, grade his performance as an athletic director, move on down the line. Lots to talk about with these guys. Let's get right into it. First segment of our show brought to you by Tanova Healthcare. Next month, will be Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. And men, one in six of you will have to deal with that disease at one point in your life. I remind you, ask your doctor about a PSA test. Is it time for you to take one? That is a simple blood test and it saved my life. Tanova and their Men's Health Center of Excellence are ready to help if indeed you do have to go through that battle. Tanova Healthcare, that's always the place to start with your health needs. Now, let me show you who's on today's show. Let me show you our roster if we've got this. It's pretty good. Uh, Shazan Bradley, former defensive lineman from Athens, Tennessee. Jeff Hall, place kicker, Winchester, Tennessee. Sterling Hinton from Passaic, New Jersey, the quarterback. Daniel Hood, defensive line right here in Knoxville. Will Overstreet, defensive line from Jackson, Mississippi. Fouad Reves, place kicker from Miami, Florida. Bobby Scott, quarterback from Rossville, Georgia. And J.J. Serlis, the former defensive lineman from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. All right, and let's introduce. Put those with your ears up there, Dean. <laughs> uh, the only thing I'm I wonder. the sky and the crowd. And yet your hair is darker than mine. <laughs> how, is, how is that? All right. I uh, want to welcome in these guys. We've got Daniel Hood right here. Uh, welcome. J.J. Serlis. Jeff Hall back with us. Good to have you here. Thank you, John. And my old friend Bobby Scott right down there. Always good to have you here. That just means you're the wisest man on the panel, Bobby. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tennessee Athletic, as soon as we plan any kind of show that's out of the ordinary, some sort of news happens that week, guaranteed. So I bring in all the, the former Vols. Dave Hart announces his retirement. So you guys, congratulations, get to talk about it. Uh, a lot of debate as soon as he decided he was, in, he was gonna hang it up, that's next June. As it turns out, he was waiting, it seems, for a contract extension that doesn't look like it was going to come and therefore he makes the, the move. I think it's interesting that Joe DiPietro, the president of the university, wasn't at the announcement. I think you can read into that. Uh, but Dave Hart, the job he has done at Tennessee, you know, it, Bama Dave is what they call him. Certainly he's had some missteps, but I think he's also done most of the things they put before him. They said these are your main jobs. I think he's done them. Thoughts on Dave Hart. Did he do a good job? If you're grading it right now, good job or poor job as athletic director? I think you have to rate it as an A. I mean, to come into what he came into, um, of course, with, with Derek Dooley and the way our team was going at that point, dealing with, you know, Coach Summit, who's dealing with the last few years that she's able to go through. You got the money issues in the program. You got the diversity problems between the men and women's athletic department. So to come in and to unify that, to put a successor that's actually been competitive in women's basketball, to bring in Coach Jones, um, I think you got to be impressed with him. I mean, yeah, there's missteps, but everybody makes them who's human. But um, I think overall, I'd give him an A. You guys, thoughts on Dave Hart and the job he's done? I'd give him an A, too. I mean, the football program is going in the right direction. Um, to go through, what he, like, like Daniel said, with basketball and the situation we had there, um, seems like the men's basketball program is the right way, too. So I think I'll give him an A. Yeah, with Rick Barnes coming in, that's uh, even though you haven't seen much out of Rick Barnes, don't know you're going to see it this year, but there is a certain track record that goes with him that you do have a feeling that's going to be solidified on that side of the ball. Uh, Jeff Hall, thoughts? Uh, I'll have to agree with the panel so far because any of us that grew up in the state of Tennessee and then obviously all, all of us played for the University of Tennessee, we understand that it's a football school. Yeah. And so the program is gradually bumping along the bottom there for a while and then all of a sudden we get Butch Jones, who I, I'm a big fan of, and to see how the culture has changed as a result of that hire, not just with the players, but the fans, the community, the state, and dealing with Coach Summit and some of the challenges that she's had, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, bringing in Rick Barnes, I, I think from all indications, he has a track record, but he also seems like a quality person. He seems like a good man. Good fit. And too. a good fit. And I think, you know, if anything, character, integrity, the right kind of reputation, 
the right kind of person to be uh, the face of your program in the community is, is a good idea. And even though Tennessee, of course, is a football school, you know, basketball is awfully popular, popular around here as well. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that hire as well. I think, Bobby, I got a, a tweet from somebody this week kind of surprised at the negativity about Dave Hart. They said in, in this tweet, I'll, I'll steal it, uh, basically the guy said, you'd think we'd build a statue of this guy after he put out all of the fires of the Mike Hamilton era. Uh, not, to, not to diss Mike Hamilton, but you have seen a stability, I think, come over the program from Hamilton to now. But, as I said, there have been some negatives. What are your thoughts I on that? I, 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 I would give him an A to A minus. I think, you know, the, the reason I give him an A minus is what he – what he did with the the women's program, yep. changing the name and everything like that, I don't, I don't think that needed to be done, and uh, a lot of people are still up in arms about it. To me, that's probably the biggest issue. There were two unforced errors in his tenure. I mean, you, he was hired to do three things: fix football, and there are a lot of people saying, "Well, it's not fixed yet." If you don't see that football is better off right now than it was when he took over, you don't want to see it because it is. <laughs> um, Fix football. In turn, that means fixing your your revenues. Get the school back in the black. Get the athletic department back in the black. He's done that. Record years in terms of, of fundraising and big chunk of that, thanks to fixing football and Butch Jones. And also, whoever, I mean, this thing has been coming down the pike for a while, the merging of the men and women. Whoever was going to take that over was going to be an ax man. You're the hatchet guy. You're going to be hated. So those were the things he was hired to do, and he did all three of those. The, the unforced errors would be whether people agree with the decision or not, he didn't give Conzo Martin a big buyout that he wanted. That caused a, a little bit of a black eye in the national press. Now, people here view it differently, and that's, that's fine. But that's one where you could question it. Hiring Donnie Tyndall. Uh, nothing against Coach Tyndall, but Tennessee at that point in time with his history coming off Bruce Pearl, you could not hire someone with that kind of a track record. So that was an unforced error. Mm -hmm. But the biggest one is the one that Bobby mentioned, and that is dumping the Lady Vols name and keeping it for the women's basketball team. Uh, that one to me is one that has really irked half the fan base, if not more. Um, but I don't know that that's something you grade the man's entire tenure down for. Uh, there have been some people this week who have said that Butch Jones, um, you can't give Hart credit for Butch Jones because it wasn't his first choice. I think that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> but that's, there are a lot of people who don't like Dave Hart that are saying, well, can't credit him for Jones because it wasn't his first choice. Any Anybody have that feeling? Anybody think that's legit? Not at all. Not at all. Your wife may not be your first choice, but she's still your wife. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, from newly married yeah. Daniel Hood. Yeah. Let's it. hope your wife isn't watching. Uh, thoughts on, on that idea? Uh, to me, you always hear these ADs say, well, I've got a list in my, in my desk drawer in case something happens. They've got a list. <laughs> they don't say, I've got one name in my desk drawer. The thing you got to look at is uh, Coach Jones and like it, it's completely different than when I played because the emphasis was on the players at that time. Like, what players did you get in? Uh, you know, how did they perform and everything? That's still the uh, the trend, the way you've got to look at it right now to to a certain point. But then, I mean, it's the coach. Look at Butch Jones. I mean, he's out in front on everything. Uh, on the pa in front page of the paper every week just about or every day so I think uh, you know I think it's changed a little bit and uh, I think I think Butch Jones does a good job of, of promoting himself and promoting this program yeah I think Hart deserves credit whether it was his first choice or third he had him on the list it's the results right yeah the results. I it's mean all like results right? if, if we had to go through the country and say okay how many of these guys were the first choice of the athletic director nobody else counts I think that's a little silly the thing about politics with all the decisions that you have to make and all the lives it's going to be affected as, as a result of those decisions and the money that's behind right. those decisions you're never going to please everybody but big picture what he's done with the hiring uh, I, I don't know how you can't at least give him a B plus or an A minus like Bobby said. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh, quick I was going to add one quickly. last thing. I think one thing he's done that is probably not or probably been overshadowed. But I mean, when I was being recruited, you know, every year they promised you, and probably some other guys as well. Oh, we're going to build a new Gibbs Hall. We're going to redo everything. And it's like, all right, well, they promised me that in 2008, <laughs> and we're just now to where it's finally getting done. And so I think he deserves credit for that, for bringing in the revenues to finally be able to turn that from an idea 
until now we got something new. All right. When we come back, the next wave of former vol of VFLs joins us. And uh, that question, I already know what the answer is going to be. Does the next Tennessee AD have to have Tennessee ties? Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs>